Okay, here we go with 3.3. Sorry, we march our way through chapter three. Let me pull up the, the notes here. So get yours out. And go ahead and start with this warm up. Just going to evaluate the expression for x equals negative 12, 0, and 3. So what does that mean you do? Basically, it means you just plug negative 12 in, simplify, plug 0 in, simplify, plug 3 in, simplify. Okay, try it. Okay, so hopefully you got nine when you plug negative 12 in, negative three when you plug zero in, and negative six when you plug three in. And on this one, your answer should have been negative 22, two, and eight. Okay, so our, our quest here, our essential question is how can you use function notation to represent a function, okay? So this may seem like it's complicated, but it's really, really not. So really just try and stay calm and, and you'll be good with it. Okay, so you know that a linear function can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b, right? We saw that in our last lesson, okay? By naming a linear function f, you can write the function using what we call function notation, okay? So basically this is saying f of x, right? Or f is a, is a function of x equals mx plus b. So the notation f of x is another name for y. So you can almost think of when you have f of x or even if it was g of x or h of x or a of x, we're talking about that represents y, okay? All right, if f is a function and x in is, is in its domain, then f of x represents the output. In other words, x is the inputs, f of x is the output which again is the same thing as y. And again, you can use letters other than f, such as g or h, you see those a lot. Okay, so really important smiley faces. So y equals mx plus b is the same thing as f of x equals mx plus b. Okay, uh, work with your imaginary partner um, to match the graphs or match the functions with the graphs or vice versa, you can do it either way really, okay. So go ahead and try those. And hopefully you recognized that 2x minus three would be linear, right? It's gonna be a line. It's in the form of y equals mx plus b or f of x equals mx plus b, okay? So it's not gonna be one of these. These are what we call parabola. Those are gonna be the squared ones. So then the question becomes, okay, how would I figure out which one a is, is it this one or this one, okay? And one way you could do that is to plug in a number for x and see what spit out of the function machine to figure out what f of x or y is, okay? So let's pick a real number, easy number for, for x here. Let's pick zero. If you plug in zero here for x, isn't this become zero minus three, which is negative three? Okay, which of these graphs has a point at zero, negative three? Does this one, zero, negative three, be down here, no. Does this one, one, two, oh yeah, it does. Okay, that must be it. And we're gonna learn other ways of, of identifying those real soon too. Um, okay, well then that kind of gives away what, what the other one is, but let's try that again. Let's say X was zero. Then we've got G of X or Y equals two. Do we have a, a point at zero, two on this one? One, two, oh, yep, it's right there. So that one is D. Now, this one might be a little bit more challenging, but eventually you're gonna learn how to do this. But we could really do the same thing. What if we plugged in zero for X? What would H of X or Y be? Well, zero squared is zero. So H of X or Y would be negative one. So let's see, can we find a, a point on here is zero negative one on here? Zero negative one would be there. No, that is not on what we call this parabola. So that's not it. Zero negative one. Oh yeah, right there. So. We know that is A, and then by process of elimination, that's C, but think about it, zero, negative three, right down there, and that's on it. Okay, all right. So um, consider the function f of x equals negative x plus three. And again, remember, f of x is the same thing as y. It's just, think of it as y equals negative x plus three. Locate the points, x comma f of x. What does f of x represent? Y, right? So find those. Where would you find those points on the graph, okay? And I've basically done the dots on the graph over here with these colors or variations. So, uh, but go ahead and, and see if you can figure it out. 
Okay. So yeah, you should have gotten, if you plug negative one in, you would have uh, negative one plus three. That is not right, is it? What should that be? Ooh, we got a mistake here, don't we? We have a mistake. Negative one plus three would be what? Right, it would be two. Okay, so that's not correct, is it? Um, actually, that is correct. <laughs> if you plug in negative one, it becomes opposite of negative one, right? Which is positive one. It's minus negative one. See, everybody makes mistakes. I could stop this recording. I could right now, but I'm not going to. It's okay. I'm not embarrassed. Okay, um, great. And then you can see what the other ones are here. Um, everybody makes mistakes. It's totally fine. But when we plug in zero, we get three. If we plug in one, then we get the two and so on. So when you went and graph those, they're here. Notice all those points line up. C is right there, by the way. They all line up. That's because it's a linear function. And all the solutions to this, all the ordered pairs that would make this true, like 0, 3, that makes this equation true. Because I'd have negative 0 plus 3, which is 3. And then if I plugged in 3 for f of x, I'd have 3 equals 3. They all line up. It's a linear. It's a liner function. OK. So go ahead and evaluate f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 when x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. OK, so hopefully you got negative 1 and you got 15, right? Plug in a 2 there, we get negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. OK, so let's let f of t be the temperature outside in Fahrenheit t hours after 6 a.m. Explain the meaning of each statement. OK, so so our, our starting point is what? It's 6 a.m., right? That would be hour zero, so to speak, OK? So what would f of zero mean? That would mean that at zero hours after 6 a.m., the temperature, right, because f of t, or f of, in this case, f of zero, is 58. That would mean that the temperature at 6 a.m. is 58 degrees Fahrenheit. OK, what would this one mean? It's not something you can figure out. You're just interpreting what this says. OK, what would f of 6 be? What does the 6 represent here? Hopefully, you just said 6 hours after our starting point of 6 a.m. So what's 6 hours after 6 a.m.? 12 noon, right? 12 p.m. equals n. What would that mean? That means that the temperature at noon is n degrees Fahrenheit. We don't know what it is. It's n degrees. OK, what do you think c means? OK, it means that whatever is three hours after our starting point is 6 a.m., which would be 9 a.m., the temperature is less than nine hours after 6 a.m., which is 3 p.m. OK, so it's just interpreting what, what, they, what, they're, what they mean. OK, so now let's get back to evaluating each function when x equals negative 4, 0, and 3. OK, so go ahead and try those. Okay, hopefully when you plugged in, you got negative 13, negative five, and one. And I got a question for you, think about it. If you went and you plotted these on a Cartesian coordinate system, on a grid, what do you think the points would do? I hope you said lined up, right? Because it's a linear function. Y equals mx plus b. F of x in this case equals mx plus b. Okay, how about this one? Go ahead and do this one. Okay, hopefully you got three, negative one, and negative four. And you might be asking, like, where did I come up with these numbers? I just made them up, okay? But when you go to graph something like this, pick numbers that are easy, that are gonna, be, that are gonna work well for you, okay? And we'll talk about that more, okay? So let's try this next one. For h of x, again, that just means y, equals 2 thirds x minus five, Five, find the value of x for which h of x equals negative seven. Okay, so this time, did they tell us what x is? Or did they tell us what h of x is? They told us what h of x is, right? So we would plug in negative seven for h of x. Now, can't we find the value of x? There's only one variable there, right? So what would you do to solve for x? Go ahead and think about it. 
Well, hopefully you said you want to isolate the term that has a variable in it, the 2 thirds x. So you would add 5. And if you add 5 to negative 7, you get negative 2. And then to get x by itself, once you multiply by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves, those cancel. The 2 and the negative 2 cancel. So we have 3 times negative 1. So x equals negative 3. By the way, can you still check this by plugging in? Yeah, plug in negative 3 here. If I plug in negative three here, isn't the three and the negative three going to cancel? And we're left with two times negative one, which is negative two minus five. Hey, that equals negative seven, which is what they told us that h of x was. So it checks. Okay, so now we're actually going to graph this. So I want you to graph the linear function. Linear means they're going to, the points should do what? They should line up to x plus five. Okay, um, and pick points like. Uh, you can use the ones I'm going to use. I'll show you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use zero. Can you see why I might use zero? Okay, negative one, one. Easy numbers to plug in, right? Why make things difficult for yourself? Could I plug in a thousand? Sure. And then f of x or y would be what? 2005. That'll be fun to go and find on the graph. Use numbers that are easy. Okay, so evaluate by plugging in zero for x, negative one for x, and one for x. See what you get. So hopefully you got five, three, and seven. And then now you're going to go plot those points. So you're going to plot the ordered pair zero, five, the ordered pair negative one, three, the ordered pair one, seven. So go do that. Either label your axes or label your points. I care. And hopefully you saw that they line up like that. So here I didn't label the axes. I just decided to label the points. Okay, see how they line up? linear function. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's try this one. Find the value of x that the function has the given value. Oh, well, what did they give us? What information did they give us to plug in, right? Remember, because you can think of g of x almost like is a y, right? So it's almost like it's a different variable, so to speak, than just the x, okay? So what are we going to do with if they told us g of x equals negative 1, and we want to find the value of x? Yeah, you're going to plug in negative 1 for g of x and then solve for x. So go ahead and do that. We already did an example like this. So hopefully you subtracted 3 from both sides, multiplied by the reciprocal of negative 1 half, which is negative 2, and you got x equals 8. Okay. All right, now let's graph this one. What would be at the top of my t table? See what I did here? Instead of x and y, I put x and f of x. What's going to be here? Hopefully you said x, and what do you think is going to be there? h of x, good. Okay, now think about this carefully. What numbers would be good numbers to plug in for x so that we don't have to deal with fractions? What do you think? Okay, yeah, hopefully you said maybe zero, but what other numbers? Four, why did I go all the way up to four? Why did I use negative four? Can you see why? Wouldn't the fours cancel when I plug in, then I don't have fractions anymore? Okay, so if I plug in zero, obviously that goes to zero and I just have h of x equals negative one. If I plug in four, the fours cancel, I have negative three minus one. So I get negative four for h of x. If I plug in negative four, then I've got two negatives, the four still cancel, the two negatives cancel, I end up with positive three minus one and I get two, okay? Go plot the points. They should line up if you did everything properly. Awesome. Yeah. Notice I'm not just putting the points. I'm drawing the line that goes through them. Because remember, the solutions to the linear function are all the points on the line, OK? Not just those three points. So you know, for example, you could pick pretty much any point that's on this line. Take the ordered pair for that point plug in for x, plug in for h of x or y, and it should balance, okay? All right, um, we can even, actually, we could even pick any point on the line, okay? Any point. All right, oh, I love this problem, this is a good one. Okay, so the graph shows the number of miles a helicopter is from its destination after x hours on its first flight. So the graph is for the first flight, okay? Well, guess what? There's gonna be a second flight. 
On its second flight, the helicopter travels 50 miles farther and increases its speed by 25 miles per hour. The function f of x equals 350 minus 125x represents the second flight, where f of x is the number of miles the helicopter is from its destination after x hours. Okay, that was a whole lot, wasn't it? So we want to break that down. But what do, what do I understand? I understand that there's two flights. The first flight, they're kind of giving me the information in the form of a graph. For the second flight, they're telling me that it's a function. They're giving me this equation, this function right here. Okay. And they told me that f of x is the number of miles the helicopter is from its destination, and x is the number of hours. And that obviously is consistent with what's here on the graph, right? x-axis is hours, f of x or y is the distance in miles, okay? So let's look at this first flight, okay? And remember, the helicopter is, it's how far it is from its destination. So it, it's flying towards its destination, right? So when it first starts flying, isn't that like the farthest it is from its destination if it's taking off and flying towards its destination? So can you tell from the graph, how far away was it when it first started? Well, when it first started, wouldn't it be zero hours? So what's the f of x or y coordinate that is associated with zero? 300, okay? And then as time goes on, right, it's getting closer and closer to its destination and when its distance from its destination is zero, doesn't that mean it's gotten to its destination? And when was that? Can you see? Can you see when it is? Yep, at three hours. So how long would the first flight take? Three hours. Okay, well, here's the next question. I kind of answered this one for you. What is the distance when either flight ends? What's its distance from the destination? Yeah, zero, of course, when it's there, it's zero. Okay, so now we need to answer the question, which flight takes less time, okay? Well, we know the first flight, we already answered that's three. So we need to figure out for the second flight, remember that's our function up here, when what? When the distance is zero, and what's the distance? The number of miles, right? And that what is, what is that, f of x or x in here? Oh, it's f of x, right? So we want, f of x to be set equal to zero. Doesn't that allow us to solve for x? And what does x represent again? Oh, the number of hours, okay. So how would you do that? Hopefully you said you would subtract 350 from both sides, divide by negative 125 to both sides, and you get 2.8. So what's the answer to that question? Which flight takes less time? The first flight that took three hours or the fl second flight that took 2.8 hours? Yeah, the second one, right? Shorter, 2.8 is less than three. Okay, how else could we have done this? Think about it, how else could we have done this? Okay, yeah, we, had, we could have graphed this one, right? And if we graph this one, where do you think our, our starting point would have been? I'm hoping you're saying 350, right? Because if X was zero, zero hours, this goes away, right? And we would have F of X is 350, it would be right there. And if we graph one more point, we could then have two points. And we know since it's linear, we could just basically draw a line down until it hit the x axis. And that would tell us when the distance is zero, which means that the flight has arrived. Okay, good, okay. Okay, what if let f of x equals 250 minus 75 x represent the second flight, where f is the number of miles the helicopters from its destination, which flight takes less time. So they've changed this now, right? So we would do this still the same way, right? We already know the first flight, we have all that information right here, but now the second flight is new information. So hopefully, again, you'd say, okay, well, I just wanna know when the distance away is zero, when f of x is zero. So you plug in and then solve and you get three and a third. So what would the answer be? Which one's faster? In this case, it would be the first flight because three hours is less than three and a third hours, which is three hours and 20 minutes. Okay, and we'll probably, I'm gonna show the STEM video with you guys probably in class. So we can stop the video here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, use that contact time. Happy to help, love helping. All right.